Uh, welcome back to John Miller Fishing out here in the Shelmet MRGO area. It's going to be kind of a turbulent weather day. Going to get a lot of wind. Uh, there's going to be some rain, but nothing that I can't handle. We had a warm front come through here and the, the temperature is like in the 70s even at night and this is uh, third week in November crazy warm and uh, I mean I just came from the north where I had I drove down through uh, ice and snow now I here now I am down here on the Gulf Coast and it's in the 70s I'm gonna have to work a lot of areas today because uh, I expect them not to be in the typical uh, sort of winter pattern because the water got so warm. The water temperature is 63 degrees, which, you know, it's come up a little bit in the last couple of days, so it's, 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 it's been a change, a shift that is going to affect the trout. So I'm going to be looking far and wide today to try to find them, but I've got all day. It's just me in the boat. Very relaxing day. Trying to bust out some of this rock shoreline. I've uh, started with a matrix shad rip shad, and that's because that's a, a floating uh, jerk bait. So it's a pretty shallow running bait, and uh, it'll it'll float up. So I'm real comfortable fishing this right up against the rocks because I'm not going to get snagged, and I want to see whether trout because it's it's been warmer whether they're right up basically in the rocks or very shallow so I'll, I'll start with this bust out a little shoreline in this way and then I'll come back with something deeper I've already canvassed the corner here with uh, on the bottom with the shell mint rig and a jig so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that they're not deep at least not in that corner so and I'm gonna so I will see you whether they're, that was a hit potentially, see if they're uh, along here, but I think that was a hit. So after fishing shallow along the rocks, I'm going to come back with a, a deeper running jerk bait. This is the shadow wrap shad deep. So this one will run down to, I think it's close to seven feet. Uh, again, that's that color I love. Go first fish. Let's see what we got here. Oh, small red. Yeah, little rat red. But yeah, it took that uh, deeper running bait. Okay, nothing, nothing else besides that small, one small red, working a deeper jerk bait. So I'm just gonna throw a couple casts with a jig. 3 8 ounce jig head with the Matrix Shad Ultraviolet on it. See if there's anything here, then we're out of here. Going to hit a new area, going to hit some grass beds in, uh, in shallower water. Alright, we've moved over to an uh, area with grass beds and I'm going to work it both with the cork and I'm also going to work it with the shallow running Rip Shad. And uh, both of these are going to give me a good idea of what if there's anything here. Yeah, I caught a fish, but it's bass. Small bass. So again, uh, nothing on the cork and swim bait, but uh, I switch over now to this the matrix shad rip shad which is a shallow running jerk bait floating so it's really good for fishing over grass which is what I got in this situation so and I can also work it fast which I 
it's one big reason to fish this type of bait. You want to canvas an area, not sure whether there's anything here. I don't really want to leave here, but as you can see, the weather's getting pretty dramatic. So I'm going to go south and get away from this weather. Uh, I don't think it's going to get me if I go far enough south. So I'm out of here. That is a beautiful fish right there. Fat boy, just working it slow, you know. Well, that's how I fish a flat boy, fat boy, but just blasting down this rock shoreline in this incredible wind. And there it is, beautiful fish. Trout. Caught on the fall brown fat boy, decent bass. Tell you what, I know it's probably hard to hear me, but I'm getting some success here, even in this wind, by fishing the rock shoreline that is just slightly past a point. Still has water, the waves washing against it, uh, but not fully into it, so it's got a little bit of a bit of a break, and looks like the trout and at least this one nice bass. I've been hanging there just out of the roughest water, but still where some current and waves will push the bait against the rock. So I'm just drifting this. Uh, it's a little, it's drifting it fast, but uh, I've been catching them all on the fat boy, just letting it, just letting it sink and working it back slow. Bass, they love this the jerk shad. Of course, that the jerk bait's a good bait for bass, no doubt about it. A nice redfish. Look at that. I totally caught that mullet right in the mouth.
That's a trout. That's a nice trout. That's the third little. Had a couple bumps. Figured something was going on here. And this is a nice trout. Whoa. Wow. That's a beautiful trout right there. a trout. That would be a redfish. All red. Ah, come on. So close. one off you go always more of a challenge doing that by yourself next cast is a trout let's say this is a good spot this is a nice Nice fat 14 or 13 and a half incher. Swallowed that matrix shed. I found one of the reasons the fish are here. Just got snagged on a rock. Uh, it just looks like singular rock down here. Over the next couple videos, I'm going to be talking about the effects of water temperature on deep water fishing like I'm doing here in the Mr. Go. Or it can be other channels, deep channels like the intercoastal or uh, rivers or wherever that may be but water temperature has a big impact on whether the fish are going to be in that spot or not and this video is a perfect example of what I'm talking about because I had been seeing fishing reports from the wall just a week prior to this trip and fishing reports stating that there was very good catching going on but, of course, as you can see in this video, there were no trout in the immediate wall area. And I, while I did find some trout farther down the Mr. Go, uh, they were not real plentiful along the rocks uh, in, in that deep water. And I'm really the, I'm quite certain that the water temperature, that 63 degree water temperature, was the reason that they weren't there. And so over the next couple videos, you'll see where I go back. Um, I do more fishing at the Murgo and other places with some deep water. And you will see as the water temperature gets lower, the fishing success gets much higher. Hey, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. And uh, I will definitely get back with you soon on another video centered on this deep water fishing.